Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoteric and our continuing series on the Mr. FPGA DE10 Nano Project. And today we have a user request, and by that I mean everyone has been asking me to talk about the MT32 Pi setup so you can get MIDI music on your Mr. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Before I get too far involved, I'd leave me a huge favor. Go down below, hit like, subscribe, that notification bell definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel so we can do more things like this, we have a Patreon link in the description down below as well. But I absolutely love MIDI, and I specifically love it on the Sharp X68000. But before we talk about what MIDI is, let's talk about the hardware we need. First, we need the MT32 Pi Hat. That's what they call it, and it's a very basic device. Gives you an OLED screen, a few buttons, and a connector so you can connect that to a Raspberry Pi. I used a 3A+, and that will be perfectly sufficient. It's relatively cheap. It's the one I tested on. I'm sure it works on other devices, but just go with what I tried. And the only other thing you have is an on and off switch. But the real brains of the operation is going to be the Raspberry Pi, because this allows you to do a bare metal emulation of the MT32 with the chips on the board. It's a very basic design. All we're going to be using is the USB port and these GPIO header pins right here. You could use the Pi for something different later on if you wanted to, but we just need to use those two functions. And you'll see here we have a micro SD card. Use the smallest one you can get because the files are tiny. The smallest side was four gig and it's still overkill. But the thing is, what do we put on those SD cards? We have to build the entire image to get it ready. And by build, I mean I say copy and paste. We're not actually gonna be compiling any code. But the MT32 project has a GitHub page with all the directions here, but I'm gonna go through them step by step because this can be a little bit more higher level functioning versus just copying and pasting. We need to do a little bit of configuration as well. But the nice thing is you get an entire quick start guide. And the first thing we really need to worry about is formatting the card because it does need to be formatted in a certain way. But if we just right click and open up the releases page, whatever is on top at this point, V0.10.3, we're gonna download the zip for that because that's gonna have the files we need to put on the card so we can build the image on the SD card. So this will actually function on Mr. So if we just take a look back at the page that we were just on previously, you'll see here that we need to format the card first. Always format it. It's going to be the easiest way so you know that it's functioning perfectly fine. I use GUI format or GUI format. It works perfectly for me. I've already downloaded it and used it in the past in different videos, but if you need it, the formatting page on the MT32 tutorial will get you over to where you need to be. Just make sure you're formatting the right card. Make sure you pick the right drive letter. If you screw this up, do not blame me. Be careful. All we need to do now is use that downloaded zip, decompress it. I'm sure you know how to do that if you're here. And we'll copy all those files from the folder that it unzipped to, to the root directory of the micro SD card that we are using. This is in real time. It takes like 10 seconds at the most. They are really small files. That's why I say use the smallest micro SD card you have. The only other thing we need to put on the card is we need the ROMs for all the different type of MIDI devices that this can support. I will leave a link to these below as well, even though I probably shouldn't. If I forget, remind me. And you're going to paste those into the ROMs folder on the SD card you're working with. That's all we need to do to functionally set this up. But we do need to actually edit the configuration file so that this device will work with our mister. And this is where it gets a little bit more tricky because if you're not used to editing configuration files, there's ways to make mistakes. It's really not that hard. And I'm going to go through step by step so you know what's going on here. So all I need to do is open up the mt32pi.cfg or config file on the root directory of the SD card we just copied to. And this will allow us to change all the options we need. Off the top we need to switch audio equals I2S. This is case sensitive and it's character sensitive. You make one mistake and it just doesn't work. You can go back and fix it but just follow along closely and make sure you're copying it as I show you. From there we need to go over to the control setup and tell the MT32 Pi how it's being controlled. We're using simple buttons because there's only two buttons on top of the MT32 Pi hat and if we just type in simple underscore buttons this allows us to control the Pi hat from the buttons itself. Now if we want on screen controls on Mr. in the menus we need to type in Mr. equals on. By default it is off. So go ahead and switch this around as well and this allows you to control the MT32 Pi from your Mr. on screen display. Now we just need to change a couple things for that OLED screen. We need to say what type it is and you'll see it's SSD 1306 underscore I2C. We can just copy and paste that. That way we know we don't type anything in wrong. Go ahead and copy it and then you'll go ahead and highlight none, control V or if you're on a Mac, 
Apple V, I think it is. I can't remember. I'm a Windows guy. And you know you're good. The only other thing we need to change now is the character height to 64. That will allow this screen to populate exactly how it should. And now we have everything done. Just go ahead and save that configuration file. We've made the changes. We need to save them. And there you go. Your device is set up. But now we just need to finish with the hardware setup. So we'll pop that micro SD card in that we just built. And trust me, setting this up is incredibly easy. All you need to do is plug it in. If you know how to deal with Lego, you know how to do this. It's hard on camera, but even I got it done in about five seconds looking through a viewfinder. And now you are all set and ready to go. The only other thing you need to do is connect a USB cable from the user port on Mr. to the USB port on the Pi Hat. Not every single USB cable works. I will leave a link to the approved cables down below because signal integrity is extremely important. And if you're using too long of a cable or the wrong cable, it's not going to function properly. So I will leave a link below look for that. But let's pop over to the X68000 core. Of course, it's still in beta, but I love the MIDI music on this. And I'm just going to load up Castlevania Chronicles or Akumajo Dracula. That's what it's called on the X68000. I just know it from the PlayStation 1 re-release. And you'll see if everything's working correctly, you're going to have an MT32 submenu in the on-screen display. And just make sure with X68000 games, you select the right sound device because you can just set it to be FM music. You want to make sure you're using MT32. And now that we are on MIDI, go ahead and listen to how spectacular it sounds. I'll play the normal FM music right afterwards, but soak some of this MIDI music up because it is absolutely spectacular. I'm sure you could tell the difference between the MIDI and the FM synth on the X68000, and that MIDI is just absolutely spectacular. But if you want to see what's going on with your MT32 Pi, you can set the LCD screen display to be on when you're using the device. And of course, you can look at it on the ground as well, as I'm showing here. It is a lazy shot. I didn't really feel like framing it, but you get the idea that it functions when this on-screen display is working either on your Mr. or on your MT32 Pi hat. But I like using the on-screen display just because I don't have to lean down and push the buttons on that Pi Hat all the time. And we do have different types of modes as well. We have MT32, we have Fluid Synth or Sound Font. I think MT32 sounds the best on everything. And listen to some gameplay between MIDI here and the FM Synth coming up, and you tell me what you think sounds better, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to know what the answer is. This game just sounds so much better with MIDI. And I'm not gonna play Bloody Tears here just on MIDI because I have a feeling it's probably gonna throw a copyright strike up and hopefully nothing got struck before this video went live so I can let you listen to the music without it putting up any copyright strikes. It always annoys me. But hearing all this music in MIDI, the way it was intended to sound if you had this device is absolutely incredible. And I love the MT32 Pi for Mr. It is just great. And of course, this does also support DOS. And if you guys want a full DOS 
Crash tutorial as well. Let me know in the comments below. I wanted to focus on the X68000 because I don't remember MIDI and DOS and grew up with it. You just need to select the MT32. And if for any reason you're getting a low power warning on the screen on your Pi Hat, all you need to do is copy over the following text right above the Pi 3 line. Avoid underscore warnings equals two, and everything will function perfectly fine. And you will get amazing MIDI music on your mister for the course of support. The Amiga, DOS, and the X68000. If you have any questions or comments, I'll leave them down below. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you guys because you've been asking a lot for it. Do me a huge favor hit like and subscribe and make what you want and i appreciate it if you support me short of that if you want more midi stuff leave me a comment but i will be back next week with more mister thanks so much for watching guys bye bye